Hello! In this video, we'll be looking at using Cloud Canon configuration to get the most out of your editing experience. We'll be touching on the different configuration options available to you to get a feel for how you might like to configure your site. A number of these options are quite complex, so they will be explained further in their own videos. Let's first talk about how your Cloud Canon config works. After your site is built in the app, Cloud Cannon will scan your site and generate a JSON file. This JSON file tells Cloud Cannon how to behave, tailoring the CMS to your site. This affects everything from your site navigation to the appearance and behavior of the editors. Your Cloud Cannon configuration lets you directly specify details about your site and its data, and lets you declare how you want the CMS to behave in certain scenarios. Cloud Cannon will read your config once your site is built and will alter the JSON file, which in turn will implement your changes. For sites built with fully integrated static site generators like Hugo, Jekyll, and Eleventy, Cloud Cannon will use a plugin to make inferences about the structure of your site. This is to give you a great editing experience without you needing to set anything up. The main use for your Cloud Cannon config in this case is to supplement or override this pre-configuration. However, for all other static site generators that use the Cloud Cannon Reader package, Cloud Cannon does not automatically infer any information. For these sites, your Cloud Cannon config is vital to tailoring your experience and to getting the most out of the CMS. The majority of your configuration will reside in a Cloud Cannon config file. This file lives in the root directory of your source files. I'll make one for my site now. It is named cloudcanon.config. and then the file extension that you would like to use. You can choose to write your config file in JSON, YAML, JavaScript, or Common JavaScript. If you are using JavaScript or Common JavaScript, the file must export a single object using module.exports, like so. For this video, I'll be using a YAML config file. If you would like to place your config file elsewhere, you can define a custom path to it. To do this, open your build config settings in Cloud Cannon and set the Cloud Cannon config path environment variable. Let's head back to my config file and see what we can do with it. First, let's take a look at configuring this source editor. The source editor lets you directly edit the code of any text-based file. If you don't like the default look of the source editor, you can customize it using your Cloud Cannon config file. With this file open, I'll first add the source underscore editor key. To this, I can change the tab size with an integer representing the number of spaces. By default, this is set to 2, but I'll change mine to 4. The show underscore gutter option, when set to false, will hide the line number and code folding controls within the source editor. This is set to true by default, but I'll set mine to false for this example. Lastly, I can change the theme of the editor by setting a string with the name of my desired theme. See the Cloud Cannon documentation for a list of the valid theme names. I'll set mine to Dawn. After I save and build my site, my configuration will take effect and the changes to my source editor will appear. You can also configure the Markdown engine that Cloud Cannon uses to process your Markdown. This only matters for files that you want to edit within Cloud Cannon. Otherwise, feel free to use whatever Markdown engine you prefer. Cloud Cannon supports Markdown It and Cramdown. Markdown It is Common Mark compliant and is the default engine used by Cloud Cannon. To specify which engine to use, in your config file, add generator and then metadata. 
Then to this, set markdown to either markdown it or cram down. To configure the markdown engine, add the name of the engine as a key, in this example, cram down, and then add the options that you want to set. Read the markdown it or cram down documentation to see which options are available. Jekyll and Hugo sites handle markdown a little differently. To configure the markdown for these static site generators, read their respective documentation. Note that for Hugo sites, you should only use the Goldmark engine as it is CommonMark compliant and therefore supported by CloudCanon. The next option we'll talk about is base underscore URL. If your site is served on a subpath, such as slash documentation, you should set that using base URL. If your chosen static site generator already has a base URL configuration option, such as with Jekyll or Hugo, you should use that instead. If your site's files aren't in the root of your repository, you can specify where they are using the source option. For example, the site files in this repository are within my site folder, so I'll set my source to site. Like with the base URL option, if your chosen static site generator already has a source configuration option, such as with Jekyll or Hugo, you should use that instead. As I mentioned earlier, CloudCanon generates a JSON file every build, which is used to configure the CMS. By default, this file is outputted to a special folder in the root of your built site. If you need, you can change this folder by using the output option. If using Jekyll, Hugo, or Eleventy, you should use that static site generator's output configuration instead. You can specify the time zone of your site in IANA format. All the date and date time inputs on your site will use this time zone. If this is unset, the time zone will default to ETC slash UTC, as shown on this date time input here. Back in my config file, if I update this, save and build my site, this input now uses the new time zone. Sometimes, you may want to restrict your team from using one or more of the CloudCanon editors. Or you may want to change the default editor for your files. Both of these can be achieved using the Enabled Editors option. This site is configured for live editing, so I want my files to open in the Visual Editor by default, rather than the Content Editor. In my config file, I'll add underscore enabled underscore editors, and then the list of editors that I want to be usable for this site. The options are visual, content, and data. If your permission level is high enough, you will always be able to access the source editor for any file. The first item in this list will be the default editor that my files open in. And if I want to disable an editor entirely, I can just remove it from this list. Now when I open any of my files on this site, they will open in the visual editor by default, and the content editor is disabled. A common use for the config file is configuring your site's collections within CloudCanon. Collections are logical groups of content within your site. They are an important concept in CloudCanon as they control a lot of the look and behavior of the CMS. Your collections config is where you define these collections. We'll talk more about collections config in its own video, so don't worry about following the code in this section. With a collection defined, you can also apply CloudCanon config that is scoped only to files within that collection. Collections are also used to populate your site navigation. You can customize what collections are shown and how they are grouped using the collection underscore groups option. If your site is built with Jekyll, Hugo, or Eleventy, CloudCanon will try to automatically discover your collections.
However, you can disable this auto-discovery so that only your manually defined collections appear. This is done by setting collections underscore config underscore override to true. There are a number of file paths that you can set that let CloudCanon know how your site is structured. This is done using the Paths option. The paths that you can set are Collections, Data, Layouts, Includes, Static, and Uploads. All of these paths are relative to your site's source path. The Collections path is the location of your collections. This is usually the path to your content files. The data path is the location of all your site's data files. The layouts path is the location of your layout or template files. The includes path is the location of small templates, such as Jekyll includes or Hugo shortcodes. The static path is where your site's statically copied assets live. This typically contains your site's images. And finally, we have the uploads path. When you upload files via one of the Cloud Canon editors, they will be placed in your uploads folder. For example, my source path is set to site, and I'll set my uploads path to uploads. Then, when I open a page in Cloud Canon and add an image to it, the image will be saved to site slash uploads. The uploads path supports dynamic placeholders. For example, if I set my uploads path to use the title dynamic placeholder, when I next go to add an image to my page, it is uploaded to uploads slash the title of my page. See the Cloud Canon documentation for the list of dynamic placeholders that are available for the uploads path. For Jekyll, Hugo, and Eleventy sites, the value for some of these paths should be set using your static site generator's configuration instead. For example, in my Hugo site, instead of setting paths.data here, I should instead use Hugo's dataDir configuration option. CloudCanon's data editor lets you edit your front matter and data files in an intuitive user interface. CloudCanon lets you modify this interface by configuring inputs. For example, you might want to set the type of a certain input, add a comment to describe it, or just change that input's label. You can configure your inputs globally throughout your site by using the underscore inputs option in your CloudCanon config file. To learn more about inputs and how you can configure them, watch our input configuration video. Two types of inputs, select and multi-select, can have their options populated from custom datasets. You can define these datasets with the underscore select underscore data configuration option. To create a select data set, First, give it a name, and to this, add your data. This can be an array, an object, or an array of objects. Watch the input configuration video to see how to incorporate this data into your inputs. The data underscore config option tells CloudCanon which of your data files can be used to populate your select and multi-select inputs similarly to select data from before. We'll talk more about data config in another video. Structures let you create blueprints for blocks of data. This lets you easily add complex objects to a data file or to a page's front matter. For example, you could use structures to create a custom page builder for your site. You can define your structures globally within your Cloud Canon config file using underscore structures. Structures are a complex topic, and we'll talk more about them in their own video. All the configuration that you put in the root of your CloudCanon config file is global. This means that your settings will apply to all relevant places throughout your site. 
It's also possible to scope your config to specific collections, files, or structures. You can scope to specific collections by adding it to collections config, to a specific file by adding it to that file's front matter, or to a specific structure by adding it to that structure's definition. The configuration in these different scopes is merged using a cascade. We'll talk more about the configuration cascade in another video. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out the Cloud Cannon documentation for more information.